All right, Salina Goodwin Hay, welcome to my show and thank you very much for joining me today. It's an absolute pleasure. I'm happy to be here, Matt, and thank you for inviting me. Perhaps we can start with the first question and you can introduce yourself to our audience and maybe paint a vivid picture of who you are and what have you been done um, throughout your life. Oh, okay. So my name is, you mentioned, is Selena Goodwin Hay. I actually live in Abbeville, South Carolina, and I recently was working for a company that um, I had the pleasure of working for for 19 years. Um, I actually just started my own company, and that is Hey Good Enterprises, LLC. And I do have quite a few of uh, subsidiaries underneath that, which is Transforming Entertainment Meditech and Hey Good Manor, which is my two babies. Um, I'm a mother of two. I've been in the industry um, from a corporate standpoint for approximately about 45 years, which is a very long time. And I also have another side to me, which is I'm also an executive chef and entrepreneur. So that's a little bit about who I am. I have two beautiful children. One lives in Delaware. The other one lives in Atlanta. Wonderful. Thank my, you very much. And my fur babies. I can't forget them. Koji. Wonderful. Got it. So thank you very much for sharing the intro. Let's go back in time and talk a little bit about your childhood. Can you tell me how it was for you to grow up? Maybe tell me your childhood story, teenage years. How was it back then? Maybe to give an idea to the younger audience and compare your times with the younger generations, whether this was worse or better, or maybe equally the same. <laughs> okay, well, uh... I was born in Brooklyn, New York, and um, we actually lived at what they used to call back then, and they probably still do, is called the Projects, and one of them was Brownsville Projects. Um, I also lived in Williamsburg um, in Brooklyn as well, and my family relocated to uh, Queens, New York, and... I'm a native New Yorker. I actually lived in all the boroughs except Staten Island, including the suburbs. Childhood, I have uh, two siblings and I'm the oldest. Um, it was a very interesting life because my sister and brother went to junior high and high school in the surrounding area, which was called Springfield Gardens in Queens. And I actually took the challenge of going to a vocational high school in which I had to take two trains and a bus. And I was able to be privy to explore different vocations. One is nursing, medical. The other is cosmetology. The other was home ec, um, plumbing, electric, Electric, electrical engineering and clerical work. So I had the opportunity of going to a vocational school, which allowed me to tap into all of those different sectors or industries, as you might say. Um, I'm glad I was privy to that because it allowed me and it gave me a stepping stone as to where I wanted to be in life. Um, speeding up going to college, I went to school for medical. I, w I majored in chemistry and minored in biology. And then chemistry was literally very difficult for me. So I decided to change my major to biology and minor in chemistry and then transition to a different school. And then I, I majored in math and sciences. I wanted to become a doctor. And 
um, went through pre-med, the whole nine yards, and then I met a gentleman and we had two beautiful kids and I put my schooling on hold. So I was one year shy of completing my, um, my bachelor's in pre-med. But I did eventually go back to school and change my entire major to business. And it was great. I wanted to become a doctor, but I guess God had me going in a different direction. I'm a very spiritual person. So I became a spiritual doctor, not a medical doctor, in which I was able to have the privy to um, do more humanitarian missionary work and was able to help thousands of people from that perspective and including a medical um, kiosk in Kenya, in Africa. So yeah, that's pretty much from the childhood until I got to this point in my, in my life where I am an entrepreneur now and I own a beautiful bed and breakfast, Hey Good Manor, um, in Abbeville, South Carolina. And it's been a challenge, a very much of a challenge. Nothing is ever easy. So this is where I am now. Got it. Thank you for sharing. And were there any <clears throat> important people in your life when you were growing up that shaped your future or the person you are today? Were there any heroes or inspirational individuals um, who you looked up to and kind of guided you into the way where you are today? Yes. Um, my grandmother on my maternal side, she was from the British West Indies. And that was the hardest working woman that I can, I can't even tell you how hard that woman worked. And she worked so hard that she was able to uh, transition many of, many of her family members to the United States. And they literally lived in the house that she lived in. And then they, you know, eventually bought their own homes and, um, those individuals are very successful to this day. Um, but I look back at, at how she always pushed on. I was always in the kitchen with her, listening to the, all the old stories of how she was raised and what she went through and our genealogy. And then um, I have to say that my mother was another person who was determined uh, she eventually went back to school um, to get her uh, high school diploma, and then she speared on, and then she went and she received her bachelor's degree in um, as an entertainer and in ballet and psychology. So she had two sides of her, and like myself. I have two sides of me, one in the corporate environment and then the other when it comes down to hospitality and, entertain, and um, entertainment. So my grandmother, there was a teacher, an instructor, uh, I should say two. One was Dr. Barry, and he's no longer alive right now. And her name was, at the time, was... Uh, Bovinger. Miss um, Bovinger was an, an inspiring um, teacher. Oh my goodness, she was inspiring. She had a daughter named April. And I kept in contact with her throughout my adult, adult life, actually, until I'm sure that she's passed away. I haven't gotten in contact with her in a while. But those individuals inspired me, told me to keep forward, stay straight on, continue to be a light in someone else's life. Um, and I mean, of course, I still have various mentors. One is Beverly Pilgrim, who's one of my mentors now. And she's also one of my friends, my girlfriend, Jackie, who's more like a sister to me. Um, 
you know, Ron and Lindsay, I mean, the Pollards, I mean, so many people, Mackenzie, like there's so many different people that plays a different role in my life, but they're also mentors. And not only because of mentoring me from the side as being friends and I consider them family members, but also the way they think and how they continue to push on. So they are very inspirational in my life right now, very much. And of course, my beautiful children who will tell me the truth <laughs> at all times. <laughs> but yes. Wonderful. Donna. Young Thank and you old. I mean. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing this. And one thing that I always ask, and I think it's very interesting to, to hear, is dealing with challenges. Obviously, everyone deals with challenges in a different way. Some are, some people have a thick skin, some others don't. But can you think of any challenges you faced growing up? And if yes, how did you overcome them? Do you have any tips that you've learned from those experiences that you could pass on to the younger generations and maybe think of any at all? Well, there are several. One is I try to be a perfectionist and sometimes trying to be a perfectionist, you don't see anything beyond that. You don't listen to what other people say. The other is I had health issues and never knew of the battles that I had to face and I was facing as a child until my adult um, years. Uh, which is, which many people, if you look at me, you can't tell, uh, and I consider it as a non-visible disability. And challenges were not being accepted and always trying to, like I mentioned before, trying to perfect myself and a challenge can also be you so worried about what other people say about you. And it, that is very important to people. And that was very important to me. One of the challenges that I had, I did have a guidance counselor. His name was Dr. Malone. And he told me that basically I would never be anything and never be anyone. So I took that challenge with me because I had to prove that I am someone and what you're saying about me, it made a big impact as to was I worthy enough? Was I good enough? How do I fix that? And that's a challenge for me. It was difficult. And then lastly is being the oldest that I could not make mistakes. Everyone had to look up to me. And I literally was the first grandkid child on both sides of the family that actually went to college. And so I felt this big burden on my back, which was a very big challenge to try to overcome that I can make mistakes, but I didn't realize that until I became an older adult that you know, growing up as a teenager and a child, that's a big monkey to have on your back. Very much. Okay, got it. And if you could go back in time and do things differently, would you? Or would you give yourself a piece of advice to do things differently? Or were you quite happy and satisfied how things turn around in your youth and who you are today? Wow. So several people have asked that question. If I changed anything that happened to me in my life, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. That's first and foremost. Second is trying to live up to everybody else's expectation, but not living up to my own expectation. As I tell my children today, success 
doesn't define you as what society tells you that success is. Success has to come from within. And I think that might have been one of the issues that I definitely had growing up that I was always put that I couldn't make a mistake. So when I did make mistakes, I felt very guilty, didn't really understood, didn't really understand what forgiveness was. You have to forgive yourself to keep going on. You are going to make mistakes, but I didn't know that when I was a child. I didn't know that when I was a teenager. I didn't know that until, you know, I became you know, I'm a mature adult and I'm still battling with those same things, but I don't think I really would change anything. I don't really think I would. Um, you know, sometimes you look at some of the choices that you made and says, what would you have done if, you know, when you become older, you, you question yourself and says, would you have changed this or would you have changed that? If I would have changed everything, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you today, Matt. A lot of people tell me that, that if they would change even a slight thing um, in their past, um, probably the current situation would look completely different than it is yeah. in reality. So it would change a lot of, of things in general. But talking about going back and giving advice or looking if you would change things, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing younger generations today? And uh, what, what advice would you give them as to how they can overcome challenges when they face them? Do you have any advice at all for the younger people? Yes. Um, one of the advices that I would get, I look at my children and they're so much smarter than I was at that age. My experience in my life and my walk of life is not the same as yours or my daughters or any of my friends or relatives, I have to look at what was in front of me. And sometimes we all are, many, many of us are a product of their environment. So when I look at individuals that are from the younger generation, from the and even the and even the baby boomer, where I consider myself as a baby boomer, and then you have your millennials, and then you have your Gen Zs, and everybody is doing everything in fast pace. Um, when I was, and then time is actually speeding up. So now you're really trying to now you're really going fast paced. Um, I think the foundation started with my home life. My home, I had a pretty good foundation. Some people are not privy to that. Some people's foundation is broken. But don't let that define you because it's broken. Even though I had a pretty good foundation, there were a lot of bits and pieces that was broken. And it's okay. The object is what path do you want to lead and do you want to stay in a broken environment? How are you going to make it different and what is your purpose? I think many individuals that are growing up today and I don't believe that they want to leave a legacy. It's a quick dollar. Let's do this. Let's do that. And everybody wants to have fun. Well, I do want to have fun too, but what legacy are you going to leave behind? So I would recommend individuals to find someone in their, you know, in their walk of life, because you come across so many different people and try to cling on to that individual when you see something positive in that individual. Some people don't do that. They don't know how to do that. And so if I can be able to provide anything, I would like to say, find someone that's positive and that's gonna elevate you and that cares about you versus being around people 
that it's only going to tell you what you want to hear. You have to listen to people that's going to tell you what you don't want to hear. And that's how I be I believe that I've gotten to where I am now is I hear the good and the bad. If you constantly hear good, you'll never change. You'll never challenge yourself. You never step out of the box. You'll remain in your own environment. And that is not a good thing. Explore different things. So that's pretty much what I can say um, as far as advice. Thank you for sharing. <clears throat> But uh, what about Korea and professional goals we live in a very fast-paced environment people or our the younger generation want to make quick bucks reach the skies be rich good looking successful and there's nothing bad for if you are, want to reach out for the stars but what career advice would you give to younger people if they're unsure what they are supposed to do Would you lean more towards, I don't want to give any answers or suggestions, but did someone be really passionate about something that wouldn't give them as much maybe revenue or, or income they would wish they would want to have a comfortable life? Or should they really pursue an academic strict path and reach out for professions that would enable them to get more money out of it? how to handle this in the younger stages because we are presented with many opportunities and also kind of influences in the same way. I think that this, that, that to me is an excellent question. Um, and I still ask myself the same thing. What is my passion and what are my career goals? That's what you started out. So I'm in my sixties and I am still trying to reach the stars. I'm still achieving and still setting, you know, bigger goals for myself. I don't stop. When you stop, you give up on yourself. And not only do you give up on yourself, you're not, be, you're not able to provide of yourself to other people. Um, I, my passion and one day, you know, When I was young, I always said that I am going to work internationally. And I said this at the age of six years old. Although I'm in my 60s, that goal never changed. There are short-term goals, there are medium goals, and then there's long goals, long-term goals. I look at things from this perspective. What is it that I can do immediately that can help me and benefit me in a prosperous way? But the long-term goal is what am I going to continue to do that's going to prosper others and also give me the fulfillment? So, When you do something that you're passionate about, the money will come. It's happy, happy, happiness that is more important to me, I can't speak for someone else, than the revenue stream. So yes, I worked for a company for 19 years, but was I really happy? No. When I left, I didn't leave on the best terms. I wasn't recognized for all the years that I put into the company. I, it was a toxic environment. Um, there was, you know, that undertone racism that was still there. I didn't feel valued and appreciated, but although other individuals in the company that came on board, I would not do, I wouldn't protrude that negativity on those individuals but let those individuals see that I am inclusive, that I do care about you and I do value you and I respect you. When you don't get that same respect, when you're trying to achieve your goals, a piece of it 
a piece of your heart is taken away. Everybody struggles and everyone need a helping hand. And when you're looking for someone to give you a helping hand, and then they beat you and they spank you for giving you a helping hand, then are you really giving that person a helping hand? Because everyone in your goal, you know, when you're trying to achieve your goals, you need someone to help you get to your goals. When a company or individual say something, but they don't really mean it, I'm an emotional person. So that I take that to heart, trying to achieve a goal or try to include individuals to achieve that goal. Everybody doesn't look at you the same way. So I tell people, continue to stay passionate about what you want to do. Don't just do it because it's it appeases everyone else. Um, be happy in what you're doing. Have a work-life balance and have priorities in your life. You know, who comes first, who comes second, who comes third. And you're not going to always have people that's going to like you. You you will have people that are threatened by you or intimidated by you or an individual that you might feel very insecure about. And so when that happens, you start to shrink your goals because of the individuals that are surrounding you. And that's unfortunate. There's so many individuals that are like that. And there are individuals that are afraid of their own success. I mean, at one point I was afraid of my own success. And then I had to say, you know what? Let me change that perspective. Let me do the best that I can do. And don't let people define who you are because you're in a toxic environment. You have a company that speaks something, but the environment where you are is not emulating what either leadership from a, a larger perspective than when it goes down from top up to bottom down, they need training. They need perspective. And I say, with your goals, you always have to educate yourself and you always have to continue training. People only have what they have, a perception of who you are in their mind. They don't want to look beyond that. So it's it's a very, that's a very great question. You know, what is it that you do? What is your passion? Do you want to do it for a quick buck? Well, you're never going to make enough money because you always want to make a quick buck. But if you're doing something that you love and, and passionate about, I am so content as to my environment that the company that I and trying my best to develop, I never want them to feel the way I felt from previous employers or not even just previous employers, previous educators, pe previous people that are in your life. You know, when I had my conversation with you prior to us interviewing, um, there was something about you that drew me closer to you because of your passion and drive and commitment to what you want to do and want to get a message out. And that is pretty much what I want. I want to get a message out. I want to be able to leave, like I said before, some type of legacy. You're going to leave a legacy of what you're doing. When we're not here, you will still be here 
because you're creating a legacy. You're interviewing what you're doing, your passion. When you're doing something for a quick buck, it is a quick buck. You're here now and you're gone tomorrow. So, yeah. Thank you very much for sharing this. Uh, very insightful and yeah, wonderful. Thank you. But over the course of your life, how have, because you tapped into it, how have your priorities and values changed over the course of your life? I think age, <laughs> that's one thing. Uh, are we doomed as younger people to go through the path where we make mistakes until we reach a certain age in life and maturity, wisdom, knowledge, and skills till we become more kind of experienced in life? Or can we actually speed up the process in a way? I, and that goes back to the people that you're surrounded with. I always say at a younger age, I wish that I would have done probably. Um, and, and ultimately I do believe I did do it, but didn't realize that that's what I did was create a board of directors for my own self. Who and what is your board of directors? So when you look at yourself, who's on your board? Who's championing for you as an individual? People only look at board of directors just being in a corporate environment or their business, but ultimately your board of directors are the people that you want to surround yourself that is coming from all different industries everywhere. You know, um, from doctors to lawyers to maintenance individuals to plumbers to, you know, white collar workers to all different types of people on what value that they can bring to your life and what value you can bring to their life. So that is how you create your board of directors. Which way do you think um, you want to, which way and direction do you want to take your life? It's the same, like no one wakes up in the morning and say, I want to become a drug addict or an alcoholic or a gambler or you know, someone who just eat, eat, eat gluttony. No one wakes up in the morning and says that. What happens is that the environment and the people that you surround yourself with will fuel it. So if something is toxic, for me, from a spiritual perspective, I say, you don't have control over the destiny of what happens to me. If it wasn't given from above, you have no power on me. So if you think that you were doing me harm, you really didn't do me harm. What you did is that you opened up another gate that what was given from above was able to open up that path and allow, but used you to open up that path. So when you think that you have, you know, oh, I, I did this to this person and you have this evil perception and you have to look at the end of the day, we all have to answer to someone, some form or fashion. Do you hold yourself accountable for certain things? Yes, I do. I make mistakes. I hold myself accountable. Do you try to correct it? Yes. You go to people and you say, listen, I made this mistake. I'm not understanding what you're doing. Would you be able to help me to understand because I'm not understanding something? Always go to people and ask them. Um, 
I'm thinking I'm answering the question, but in a roundabout way, but it's basically, it goes back to mentor and how you build your board of directors and who you want to be on your board of directors. Because when the individual becomes successful, everybody wants their names mentioned. Everyone wants to know, you know, who they are. I remember a young lady, her name is Rosalind Shan. And um, she was an incredible woman. Um, and she worked at my previous employer. And I never forget how com passionate she was and how passionate she was in helping. And then I remember another gentleman named Jeff Hoops and also a, another gentleman named Jim Turley and Kelly Greer. You know, those individuals helped me see things in a different light, in a different perspective. Ken Boyer and Jessica Donning. These are people that were, I considered on my board of directors that I will be able to share information with. But the people that were in my immediate group, I could think of one person. And I think from my other employer, I think it was one, and, and he was younger than me. His name was Jason Berman. Great person, great individuals. But people that come in and be around certain people, they change your perspective. They try to change your perspective. Um, they say that they're doing good, but ultimately they're not. So you have to create a, a great board of directors, a great board of directors. And I see that in my life now. Got it. Wonderful. No, thank you very much. That's uh, very insightful. And what about habits? Is there a positive habit you've developed throughout your life? that followed you on a daily basis and if yes yes it is yes it? um habits uh positive habits uh like i mentioned before i'm a spiritual person so i will meditate and worship in the mornings if i don't i feel a void or the day doesn't go as well as i had expected it to go and don't get me wrong there's days that i sometimes it's like oh my god i gotta do this and i gotta do that and then you stop and you're like okay you didn't do this so this is why this is happening so that's one thing but then i turn around and i give myself a five minute breather and say okay you have to think about something that's positive to keep you going. The other is you definitely have to enjoy the outside sun, um, the smell of fresh air, breathing exercises. And, you know, some people call it mindfulness. I call it spirituality and inspiration. Um, because it's not about self. And even though you have to take care of yourself, I find that so many individuals are focused on just self. And that is what is, is to me, I find that is splitting the world. And that's sometimes what I find in the younger generation. It's everyone thinks about themselves when the older generations were always thinking about their family. So there's there lies the difference between my age and someone else's age. Um, and then that has to do a lot with my upbringing um, and my environment. So it makes a big difference. But needless to say, if, if people stop thinking about self, I think and being selfish and talking about I, 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 or putting the blame on someone else. You did this, you did this, you did this. I learned about that word. You can be very, very 
negative and it can be very, very confrontational. You did this, you did that, you did this. Instead of saying, well, I feel this way because of A, B, C, and D. Don't give power to the other individual by saying, you made me feel this way. No, they cannot make you feel a certain way, right? They, that means you're giving them power over you. You have to take ownership of your own feelings and your own actions and your own accountability. So I think that's part of it. Okay, thank you very much for sharing it. Wonderful, wonderful. What about the most important lessons you've learned about relationships in your life, whether this would be with family, friends, or romantic partners? Any advice to the younger people or any anything you would want to share about those experiences and lessons in life? Relationships change. They can either get better or they can separate or they can be deleted out of your life, um, the people. And that's okay. Some people are in your life for a time and a season to get you from point A to, to point Z, maybe. And then there's some people that can get you from point A to point B. Um, and it's not that you don't care about someone else or relationships, but it depends on where you are as far as from a growth perspective. So I can have someone that's in my life and don't speak to that individual for 20 years. But when I get on the phone with that individual, it appears that I've spoken to that. And it's like I spoke to the person yesterday. But then you can have individuals that suck the energy out of you. And every time that you speak to them, it's always something negative, never anything positive. Then you can have relationships that you can see that those individuals only want something when they call you. And then you can see people in relationships that will just use you and take credit for your work. There are different relationships. And once again, it goes right back to your environment. What type of environment are you in? Are you in a great environment that you build long lasting relationships? Or are you in a negative environment that it's toxic relationships? Relationships, I have them in dimensions. I have the top tier that I look at them as a 10 and they look at me as a 10. But then I've also discovered that I can look at someone at a 10, but they can look at me as a three. So how do I maneuver that relationship? Still with kindness, because I always remember my maternal grandmother always said, kill people with kindness, regardless of how they treat you. Kill them with kindness, because- Yeah, I've heard it a few times. Uh, it's, a, it's a good saying. <laughs> yeah, kill them with kindness, because there's- there's nothing negative in kindness. Kindness is kindness. It's either you're going to look at yourself and see your faults, or you're going to appreciate the person that still treated you with kindness. Always remember, positive is positive. Consequences only comes from negative. There is no consequences from something that's positive. Positive is positive is positive is positive. So that relationship can be positive, but there's always consequences behind something negative. There's no 
consequences behind anything positive. So relationships, um, you can have people that counsel you. That's a relationship. You can have people, you know, just a marriage relationship, your children relationship, um, friends relationship, people you just met, you're building a relationship. Um, you have to have a relationship with your dog, your cat, you know, where animals are two dimensions, humans are three dimensions, animals, body and soul, humans, body, spirit, and soul. There's the difference. So how you build your relationships are very, very crucial in your life. And at the end of the day, when I said kill people with kindness is because when you are not in the room, your name is being mentioned. What is being said when you're not in the room? And when you build great relationships, even though people, even though you have them at different dimensions, what negative can they say about you if they have a certain mindset but if they have a, a negative mindset that's the consequences on them it's not the consequences on yourself so i've discovered that truly relationships okay. that's, are really crucial that's that's good to know now so we're talking about the positive habits and uh, <clears throat> lessons about relationships but when things get really tough in life what kept you going and ticking throughout your career and not life failing. In general? not failing i don't like to fail and i look at look at failure as a learning experience so I remember when I was in college and we had to do case study. And one of the case studies was Disney. And, you know, most people know what Disney is. Well, my understanding is that individual failed seven times. And I guess six times, but the seventh time became this, you see what, where Disney is right now. But what made that individual continue to keep going on? There's individuals that will fail and then they'll give up. I don't like to give up. And I don't like the word, I particularly don't like to say the word can't because everyone can. You can say it's very difficult or I'm unable but don't use the word can't. I'm unable to do that at this particular point in time. I'll have to get back to you or let me see how I can figure this out so that I'm able to do it. So it's either you can't or you won't. That's the key. So, you know, those are little takeaways that I see when it comes down to failures i just keep getting up i keep constantly getting up um i struggle every single day with health issues and i was diagnosed with four autoimmune diseases and it's difficult for me there's days that it's difficult, but if I don't keep going and changing that mindset to keep going, my doctor literally said that you will literally die. Like what's keeping you going? And when I tell them that I don't like to fail and I don't like someone to tell me that I cannot do something, you can't do this. You can't do that. Like that guidance counselor, Mr. Malone, that was in my high school um, told me, you're not gonna be able to do it, you can't. That drove me to say, I'm going to show you that I could. 
when the doctors say you won't be able to run again. And I said, you can't tell me what I can do. You're not yeah. in that position to tell me that. You've so. got a very strong character and a very strong mind to, to keep yeah. going. <laughs> oh, you face so many challenges in life that you've decided no, no one is gonna make it worse than it is. And I'm just gonna go and keep going. As you said, yeah. never give up, being consistent. Okay. What about, what do you think is the key to a successful in fulfilling life? For everyone, the answer is different, but maybe something you think we could tie up and pass on to younger people, the younger generations in particular. What do you think? So what is the key of success or what is the key is that i just want to What's, make sure that i'm what, understanding what is the key to a successful and fulfilling life for everyone the answer is different but maybe we could tie something up that we could pass on to younger generation we tapped in in the beginning that you know the current generations yeah, are we living did. in a fast paced environment quick back but from your own perspective and experience, I, for me, your own life, what do you think? Yeah, I want to be happy what I'm doing. And I, even my space, my office, um, taking moments out to breathe and, and not feel stress. There's good stress and then there's bad stress. Good stress to me, you know, bad stress is toxicity and demanding and the environment that you are in. That's stress and that's negativity. So that starts to affect your mindset. It stops you from creating. It stops you from feeling valued. It stops you from being creative. It stops you. So that's negative stress. Positive stress to me is the adrenaline that's going, that I'm so creative, that my mind is going so fast that I want to put everything and do everything now. And, but I'm not in a negative environment. I am not, I don't have relationships with toxic people. I eliminate that from my life. And then I take the time, even though there's deadlines due, I still take the time to step away so that I can become creative. And then I get back at it and it's like, okay, I'm in a positive stressed environment, but I'm enjoying it. I don't know if you can kind of understand what that feels like. So that's for me. So there's negative stress and then there's positive stress. Um, and you have to be careful from the positive stress that you're not taking care of your health. The negative stress affects your health. There lies the difference. Negative stress definitely affects your health. Positive stress you have to be careful that it doesn't take you and you don't enjoy what you're doing anymore. And it takes you outside of your character and who you are and, but you're enjoying it, but you have to meet these deadlines, which is still can become stressful. Um, a key takeaway is enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy what you're doing. Feel passionate about what you're doing. If I'm doing what I'm doing now and I see that it's becoming stressful till it becomes negative and I don't enjoy it, the negativity is coming from not enjoying what I'm doing. Positive, as I mentioned, is positive. 
negative, there's consequences. So it becomes stressful. And that's what I've come to realize the older that I become. So I tell younger individuals, if it's not making you happy and you're not enjoying it and you don't feel that you're making an impact in someone else's life or at the company where you're working for or the people that you're connecting with, then remove yourself from that. Take a chance and go out on faith. And I think that my faith has gotten me to where I am now. I am a very faithful person to say, I'm looking at something that's not there, but I'm for the hope of tomorrow. Something that's not there, it's not in front of me, but I have the hope and the faith that I can see myself there. That's what I don't know if there is a segment of society that's missing that, which ultimately becomes a legacy. So if I die tomorrow, have I did something different? Yes. Have I changed history? I did. I'm new in this community and the first minority to own one of these um, Victorian homes that slaves built years ago. And now I own one. I always said that I wanted one, but I kept the goal and kept going towards with it, even though I had all of these various challenges and my life went in all different ways, I still kept that goal. So I want the young, the younger generation, it's not about just, oh, I want to have children and I want to get married and I want to make a lot of money. No, that's not it. What is your purpose? What are you here for? And I think that's what people are missing is purpose. What is my purpose? When I meditate and pray in the morning, I said, what is your will and what is my purpose for today? What am I, what, what do you have me here to do? What am I supposed to do today? What? Is it, do, do I need to do this because I'm going to gain money from something? Everything is not about money. And I think a, a, a large part of the society thinks that everything is about money and it's not about money because money will not make you happy. You can have the richest people in the world, but look at some of the celebrities that have taken their life, that have gone to drugs and alcohol, that have just fell into a pit because there's a blank or there's a void in their life because they feel either alone or isolated. I, I don't, I think that's a big part of it. Everybody wants to do something quick and it takes a lot of years to get to where I am. I have gray hair and I earned every bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I think it's a very powerful message there and inspiring at the same time for what you've achieved and fought for as well at the same, uh, at the same time from all the stories and things you've shared and some wisdom and some guidance and some motivation, is there a piece of wisdom that you specifically would want to share at the end of our interview with the younger generation that they should keep dear and hold off and think could guide them in a way find peace find joy find something that you're passionate about um share it with people you know, once I said before, just do something that you're very passionate about. Um, and don't take something that you feel is a failure as 
something so negative, it's just like you're going to school. Life is school. It's a journey. I remember watching Forrest Gump and Sally Fields said, life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're going to get. Right? And that is exactly what it is. I'm going in this I'm going in this direction. How this is what I see myself trying to go in this direction. However, I'm being pulled here and down here and over to the next side and I'm getting pulled in all these different directions. But when you have your mind set on the prize or the goal, keep staying straight ahead to the goal. And then also you should do is prioritize what your goals are. Is your goal for, for, to help people? Is your goal only just to make money? Is your goal selfish? Is it prideful? Is it boastful? Or is it giving and loving and caring for the next person? Because when you do that, your board of directors become larger and larger and your relationships become larger and larger and everybody's not going to like you. That's key, right? Everybody's not going to like you and that's okay. But you still kill, kill, kill people with kindness, even though they, they don't like you because eventually that person will either come back around in your circle it would their name your name will come across their mind eventually one day people start to evaluate your, um, themselves and i always continue to say to people people are always watching my neighbor watches me. I watch my neighbor. I'm in a, if I'm in a corporate environment, I'm watching what their behavior is and what they're doing. They're watching me. Everybody is always watching. What is it that they're watching when it comes down to individuals? Who and what are you portraying out to people that they see that's positive that they're watching i'm watching matt matt watching me matt's interviewing me i'm interviewing matt matt's doing this you know my daughter watched me i watch my daughter my friend lindsay watches me my friend mckenzie watches me i watch them but why are they still in my in my circle. There's something that they see that's positive, why they want to be around you. So your relationships with people makes a big difference. You take away and you say, kindness continues to grow. Um, caring for other individuals, learning is key. You always have to learn. What did you learn today? What did, if you go to bed at night and you have not learned something, something is wrong. We always have to learn something new each and every single day. And Sometimes, and I'm talking about something that you learn that's positive. You can learn something and it can be negative. You can learn how either someone treated you and or someone's character is out of whack or someone or something that you read and you learned how they populated that information on or they communicated or it's on, on a document. Um, I mean, you can learn something, but what is it that you're learning? So, for, but for the, 
younger individuals, find a mentor, find someone that's going to build your board of directors. Who do you want people to, who do you want to surround yourself with that you know that you're going to grow? Don't be around people that's going to take you down a dead end because, or that's going to suck the life out of you because it's sad. And I think that's something like sometimes I look, I can see the difference. My daughter is three years older than my son, but she always had the mindset of a person who is much older or she surrounds herself with people that are much older. Well, sometimes your environment and the people that you surround yourself with can be at one age or, or lower. And what are you learning from them? Wisdom and respect your elders. I love to be around people that are much older than me because I learned so much that you're not going to get from a younger generation. But I also like to surround myself with individuals that are younger because I get a different perspective on how they think. So, yeah, that's my key takeaway. Enjoy what you're Selena. doing. Selena, I wanted to thank you very much for all the wisdom and uh, knowledge and stories you've shared with me. I really appreciate it. That is the reason I started the channel to speak to um, people who have the wisdom and can pass it on to the younger generations. So I'm very grateful for this, for you investing your time to speak to me and be able to share that with others that hopefully might be able to even tap into a handful of individuals' hearts and change the perspective on life. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Matt. And I appreciate doing this. And I've, I'm honored that you, you know, reached out to me and I'm honored to do this. Whatever I can do to help, I'm here for you. Thank you.